Good morning. Are we live? I'm not sure if we're live yet. The thing is swirling in a circle. Good morning. This is Monday, July 5th, and it's good to be back with you this morning. I hope you had a wonderful, celebratory, safe weekend, July 4th. I was out of town at a family wedding down in Lexington, Kentucky, and we had fabulous weather. I have to tell you, when I first heard about an outdoor wedding on July 3rd in Kentucky, I wasn't hopeful about the weather, but everything was beautiful. And it was so much fun to be together with family and to celebrate such an occasion and everything about it was wonderful. It was, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I cried a lot. <laughs> there was a lot of sobbing going on, but I wasn't alone. It was just so beautiful and so meaningful. And there was so much love present among our family. And the friends and the bride and groom were such wonderful people. It was such a beautiful event to be a part of. And then we watched fireworks. Yesterday we came home and we watched more fireworks. And we happened to catch a Cubscape on the way down. They were in Cincinnati. Don't ask me any questions about it. I don't want to talk about it any further. But it was a wonderful weekend. And what I want to talk to you about today is freedom. Timely topic, right? But as we celebrate freedom, we celebrate the opportunity that is before us in this nation to pursue our highest ideals. And I want to talk specifically today about spiritual freedom and spiritual health. Because so many of us are encumbered in this life. So many are not quite living life to its fullest abundance and many are just weighed down, weighed down terribly by so many things. And folks, life doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't. I don't care who you are or what your past has been. You can live a full and abundant and joy-filled life. So let's talk about what it looks like if you are not spiritually healthy. When you are spiritually unwell, it can create problems for you physically, mentally, and emotionally. If you are not aware of what spiritual dysfunction looks like and feels like, you may not know what to watch for or what to be aware of. So today I want to go through some things to, to help you pinpoint that so you can do the work you need to do to live a full an abundant and joy-filled life. So first, and I have six items I want to talk about today, six red flags, if you will, and there are more, but I'm going to talk about six today of spiritual malaise. One, let's start here. If you feel guilt or shame frequently, Holding on to shame or guilt about past mistakes or actions is holding you back from spiritual health. Practice forgiveness for yourself, for the pain you have caused, and for others who have wronged you over the years, and do everything you can to make up for your errors, but then let them go. You have to let them go. If you are ashamed of yourself for any reason, identify the source of that shame and repair the damage which can harm you emotionally as well as spiritually and physically. There are distinct physical symptoms that can come about when our spirits are unwell. And learning to accept and love yourself is an essential part of spiritual well-being. And it might be the most difficult, but it's essential to our spiritual health. The second red flag I want you to look for is that you often blame others. Blaming others for your life is giving away your power to make better choices and to change your path. 
without accepting responsibility for your own role in life, you can't become spiritually whole. Holding on to anger and resentment for your circumstances is also relinquishing your personal power to heal your spirit. Let me say that again. Once you blame others for your spiritual well-being, then you abdicate your power to change your circumstances. If it's others' fault how you feel, then it's dependent upon others to change that. But if you take responsibility for how you feel, and life isn't fair. Life is not going to be fair. Life can be terribly unfair. But you get to choose how you feel, act, and respond in every situation. And if you maintain that power, then you have the power to change. The next red flag is you are filled with fear or anxiety. Those with anxiety or who are always afraid are spiritually unwell. When you are in harmony with yourself and with your world, you have nothing to fear. Fear is a sign that your beliefs are grounded in negative thoughts. Look closely at these and determine the source of your anxiety and you can begin to repair your spirit. If you have a fear that you're going to lose something or you don't have enough of something, while that can be very real and true, there's a broader hope around you and when you're connected with something bigger and more powerful then your thoughts will spring from those places the places grounded in hope and love when you are grounded in negative thoughts that's where fear and anxiety come from next you consistently think negatively when your mind automatically drifts to negative thoughts or when you are regularly feeling negative emotions, your spirit is in crisis. Negativity can come from many places, but it often results from feeling powerless over your life. And when you feel hopeless, you no longer believe you can change your circumstances or improve your situation. Getting away from exter external sources of negativity can help, but it's really up to you to turn your mind to more positive emotions. Next, you are apathetic or feel fatigued. Apathy toward life in general or the world is a sign of spiritual illness. We've all been there, we go through these times and this is a tough one. When you feel apathy toward those around you, toward your community at large, or toward the world in general, it's a huge honking red flag that your spiritual health needs tending to. And this often results in feelings of listlessness, fatigue, or a lack of enthusiasm, which can make you feel as though there's no point in anything you do. If these words are hitting home with you, tend to your spiritual health and through small and consistent changes to your ways of thinking you can feel more energetic and in control of your life and this can help you out of that negative spiral i can help i have tools and resources to address all of these things and finally you struggle to have healthy relationships Spiritual health is what allows you to connect with others in a meaningful way. So when your spirit is suffering, your relationships will often suffer as well. Learning to love and accept yourself, I'm gonna say that again. Learning to love and accept yourself is crucial, crucial for forming lasting bonds with others. So if you notice that you cannot sustain new relationships 
or that you are struggling to maintain those that you've had for a long time, your spirit may need some attention. Now, those are the six red flags I wanted to go with you today. But spiritual illness comes in the form of many, many things. Addiction. Um, in addition to those we've talked about already, there can be addiction, uh, a lack of joy or feelings of melancholy, attitudes of losing part of yourself. And because the spirit has such a powerful influence over the body, you can even heal some of your physical symptoms when your spirit is hurting. If you have some digestive issues or body aches or pains, a lot of these are physical manifestations of a spiritual illness. For instance, if you harbor resentment for someone, you can bet you're going to have disruption in your digestive system when you eat. You can bet your, spirit, your sleep will be disrupted. Body, mind, and spirit all go together, and the spirit is a place that houses our values and our moral compass, and that spirit is going to trump body and mind all the time. So it is so important to tend to your spiritual health. And while it may seem difficult or frightening to overcome all of these things and to address those issues where you're not real healthy spiritually, there is hope. And you can make real progress. And you can change your life. You can experience transformation. You have the power within you to overcome whatever is plaguing your spirit. And only you can make that difference in your life. But you don't have to do it alone. I've done the inner work. And it's not a one and done deal. It's a continuation each and every day to choose to be spiritually healthy. And to continue to do the difficult inner work. And I've been there. I have been down in that deep pit and I have found a path out. It's not one I discovered. It is one that others have earmarked because they have traveled that same path as well. And I want to help you in your path too. If you would like further resources or a partner in your journey, reach out. My name is Reverend Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor in Iliopolis and Niantic at the Christian Churches, and I'm also the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries, just hoping that one of these pathways, one of these manifestations, one of these ministries will find you and offer you a path to spiritual health and wholeness. So reach out. I would love to be a partner with you on this journey. And don't live your life bound. Experience the fullness of joy and abundance that is available to you and I guarantee you will never look back. Life is to be lived and cherished. So that's what I have for you this week and I'll see you here again next Monday. Bye for now.